David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University in the class of solids, CE3303. I'm talking about exam number three, the first page. This is a composite of the three versions of the test. And what we had was a, a bent square bar in this configuration with the force up here, in this case 30 pounds, at a distance one foot from where the first bend is. I was told that the cross section was square and I was given an area. In this case, I'll say the area was 7.84 square inches. And that would lead me to do this little math down here to get the dimensions of the thing. If it's square, it's just a square root of that, 7.84, so it's 2.8 inches square. Draw a little diagram here of a cross section, and I compute I, the moment of inertia, as 2.8 times 2.8 cubed, or to the fourth power in that case because it's square, divided by 12 is 5.12 uh, inches to the fourth. Later on I'm going to use the fact that the C distance in the bending stress formula is 1.4 or half the height distance from the neutral axis to the extreme fiber. Okay, as in most problems I want to do a free body diagram at, at section AA. I've got at this point these are the two important reactions. The, the other ones are zero. The other one, only other one is in the x direction. And there is no force in the x direction, so there's no it would be shear on that plane. But anyway, so the sum of forces in the y direction up is positive, is zero. So I have P, the reaction at AA, minus 30 pounds. So P is equal to 30 pounds. Sum in moments at that section. I get my 30 pounds times the one foot moment arm minus the reaction M. So M is equal to 30 foot pounds. I multiply it by 12 to get it into inches, 360 inch pounds. Okay, the first question is what's the maximum bending stress at AA? Okay, that's just the flexor, flexor formula. It was on the formula sheet. Bending stress is equal to M C over I. M is the moment, C is the distance to the extreme fiber from the neutral axis, and I is the moment of inertia. Plug in the numbers, 360 times 1.4 divided by 5.12 is equal to plus or minus 98.4 PSI. Remember the bending stress is going to look like this down here, which we're going to use here in a second. And it's compression on this, this side, on the inside, and it's tension on the outside, as you can see by the direction of the moment, which I've drawn on the free body diagram, which turned out to be correct. The direction is correct because it's a positive number. Okay, number two, easy question. What's the axial stress at AA? Sigma axial, normal stress is just P over A, 30 pounds divided by 7.84 square inches is equal to negative 3.83 PSI. It's compression because it's pushing on the uh, on the member. So I write negative 3.83 PSI or also took writing C for compression as part of the correct answer. The last question was draw and label the normal stress profile. Well the normal stresses are the sigma bending. Sigma is the symbol for normal stress. And so this is what we wanted. We wanted to combine. The problem was called combine bending, combine combine loading, excuse me. So the bending stresses look like this with compression 98.4, negative 98.4 psi on this side, tension on this side, varying down to nothing at the neutral axis. Superimposed with the axial stress, which was uniform over the entire cross-section of negative 3.83, this answer up here. So it adds to the compression on this side. So the compression on this side is negative 98.4 minus 3.83, just doing it algebraically, 
is negative 102.3 psi on this side varying down to nothing at the new neutral axis on this side it's 98.4 tension positive minus 3.83 compression from the axial stress is equal to 94.6 so that's what I wanted to see there